Hello everyone, this is Mary Gregory with MAS Coding Solutions. Welcome today to Coding Speak. Coding is going to be speaking with you today. Today we will be doing part one of understanding status indicators for the CCS. Status indicators are generally not on the CPC. I think if you take the COC, which is their Certified Outpatient Coder, you may have some questions concerning status indicators. Let's define what are the status indicators. Uh, as I was doing a Google search, one of the things status indicator can mean is you have a light sometime on your computer that will indicate the status of your computer. It will indicate if you got a low battery, it will indicate, um, I guess, if you, you know, you're in a Word document, but you have those status indicators to help you to know where you are on your computer. Well, guess what? CMS use status indicators to tell the payer how to pay the facility. Status indicators are used for facility billing. Uh, Coders can apply those status indicators. Sometimes those status indicators are applied by the billing department. Um, so it's just, it's a mix. So every CPT code, and I have, a, I have an older CPT book because I left my new one in the car. But every CPT code that CMS pays for has, or not pay for, I better say that, or not pay for, has a status indicator. And that status indicator tell the insurance company, tell the payers. Uh, remember now, um, CMS several years ago went to what we call the MAC system. That stands for Medicare Administrative Contractors. And these contractors operate, in, or operate for different regions of the country. And so without patient now, status indicators do not apply necessarily to inpatients. Status indicators applies to outpatients. And so the status indicators can be applied to all those CPT codes that CMS may say they pay for or not pay for, as well as a level two Hicks PIX code. Okay, now what are some of these status indicators? You can Google CMS status indicators and it will give you a list. Now some of the status indicators are more common than others. Uh, the coders sometimes see uh, some of the status indicators more, more than they would see other. For instance, we have a status indicator A, like an apple. That indicator indicate that this service is not paid under the OPPS system. Generally you will see a status indicator of A uh, when someone, when the, uh, in, when the hospital put uh, on their billing form a lab test. And I'm just going to use this as an example. Maybe the patient had a urinalysis as an outpatient. And so we want to get paid for that urinalysis. Well, the urinalysis may be paid on what they call the CLIA, the Clinical Laboratory Improvement Act. So it has its own payment schedule. So the, when we send the claim out the door and it comes back, it may have a A by that code, by that CPT code. Now, when it's not paid on the PPS, it doesn't mean you do not get paid at all. It simply means that you have another payment schedule uh, that is paid under. So some of the most of the labs could be paid under the Clinical Laboratory Improvement Act called CLIA. Uh, another one is physical therapy. Physical therapy has its own payment schedule. And so that's the status indicator A. And then we have what we call the status indicator B as in boy. That status indicator that that is a non-allowed item or service for OPPS. In other words, that's not something that CMS feel like uh, is done, should be done as an outpatient, or 
it could be done in a physician office or maybe something that has to be um, uh, done um, just in another way. So it's not a lot item or service for OPPS. And uh, so once again, that's status indicator B. One of the ones we see the most often, and probably when you take your CCS, you may see this as a question. What does status indicator C mean? C as in cat, C as in Charlie. What does that mean? That means that that is a procedure that is paid as an inpatient only procedure. CMS have a list of CPT codes and maybe some level 2 codes that says these procedures for a Medicare patient cannot be done as an outpatient. Now, that doesn't mean that the procedure cannot be done as an outpatient. You can do it, but it simply means that if it's on that inpatient only list, guess what? Medicare not going to pay for anything that any services that is associated with that inpatient, um, inpatient procedure. One of them I can think right offhand is a hip replacement. Uh, this year for 2018, CMS took uh, total needs off of the inpatient only list. Now you can get a copy of the inpatient only list. It's very, very long. Okay, very long. Um, and so, but like I said, hip replacement is one I know right offhand that uh, you cannot do as an outpatient. That doesn't mean the physician will not do it as an outpatient. That doesn't mean that Blue Cross Blue Shield will not pay it as an outpatient. It's simply saying if you have a, if you are a Medicare patient, they will not pay for a hip replacement as an outpatient. So that's what C means. And I'm a, it's a lot more, but I want to cover the ones that you may tend to see on that test. Another one that you may see on the test is what we call an N procedure. N as in Nancy. N as in no, N-O. When it is a N procedure, that means that that procedure is never paid um, I hate to use the word never, it's a few exceptions, but I won't go into those today because remember the CCS do not test you on exceptions. They test you on what you should know as the norm, not the exception. And so EN means that there's no additional payment. Think of EN as a bundled procedure. Uh, generally speaking, if somebody come in and they, let's say they have an inguinal hernia as an outpatient. It is normal. It is considered standard practice of care that you put a Foley catheter in that patient. Therefore, when you build a Foley catheter code, a CPT code, with that inguinal hernia CPT code, it will tell you that that catheter is a bundled procedure. It will have a status indicator of N. And you will not get an additional payment for that. So remember, with an end procedure, that means that it's, it's a bundle procedure. Uh, Sometimes you may see CMS referring to that as incidental. Now what I want to tell you is this. When you take the CCS, they may give you a um, scenario where they would actually give you, say the inguinal hernia was a cost of $1,500 and uh, the Foley catheter was $10. Well, because it's a status indicator, you're not going to get paid that $10, okay? So just kind of remember that about end procedures. Even though on that test and even in reality of uh, real life coding, we may charge for something, but that doesn't mean we get paid for it. The other uh, one that they tend, you may um, see, um, is a Q procedure. A Q, uh, Q procedure means it's package service. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about Q in our next uh, video, uh, part two. We'll talk a little bit more about the Q because it's a little bit different. But I did want to mention to you the next two that you're going to see on your CCS if you have uh, questions on the status indicator. You're going to see S, S is in Sam, and that means significant procedure not subject 
to multiple procedure discounting. So when someone have an S procedure, S procedures are generally very uh, basic procedures. Uh, so if you have an S procedure, like uh, EKG could be an S procedure. I mean, EKG is not subject to discounting because they probably only pay you $5 for an EKG. They may pay 10 for an EKG. And so it's not subject to discounting. And what that really means is this. If you have two EKGs on that charge, on your charge, uh, on your uh, line items for billing, and you're charging $10 per EKG, that means you're going to get $20. They will not subject that to discounting. Let's talk about T, because once I talk about T, T may help you to understand about S. T means it is subject to discounting. If you work in a physician office, you have the fee schedule. You have that physician fee schedule. And it has certain alphabets that tell you when another code, I believe XY or something like that, is bundled into another code and you will not get additional payment. The hospital remember the out, OPPS stands for Outpatient Prospective Payment System. Underneath that you got APC, Amatory Payment Classification. That is the way the hospital is reimbursed. So they don't necessarily, this is the hospital, just think of the APC as being the hospital fee schedule. And so, a T procedure means it's subject to discounting. I think if you work in a physician office, if the patient has more than one procedure, you put a modifier 51 on it. See, in the hospital setting, uh, outpatient surgery setting, we don't use 51. We cannot use 51. That is a modifier for physicians only. And generally, when you use 51, that means you get half of the second procedure. You always get 100% for the highest pain procedure and then you get half for the lesser pain. So the way that they do for hospital, they just have T status indicator T. And so that status indicator T means that if my patient have a cholecystectomy and an inguinal hernia repair and if the cholecystectomy costs $2,000, I'm going to get the full whatever 80 percent uh, whatever Medicare pay. Then the inguinal hernia is a thousand dollars. I'm only going to get uh, 500 for that one because it is both of those procedures are T procedures and they're subject to discounting. See. If I had my EKG in there, so I got two T's and I got an S. So my S, let's say I got two EKGs, so I'm going to get a 100% of whatever Medicare pay for my cholecystectomy because it's the highest paying. I'm going to get half for that inguinal hernia because it's T and they both subject to discounting. I am going to get $20, I'm going to get full payment for those two EKGs because S procedures are never subject to discounting. Well. I think it's been great today talking to you about the CCS and the status indicators and how they apply to your CCS. Um, this is part one. and part two, we're going to dive a little deeper into some very specific types of um, uh, status indicator like the J1. And we'll go back and talk a little bit about that Q status indicator as well. And we'll wrap it up. Uh, it's been great talking with you today. Remember, coding is always speaking to you in some, some shape, form, or fashion. Don't forget to follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook. Um, we're doing a little bit on Twitter. You know, it's kind of going away for businesses. Uh, but, um, stay, uh, oh, visit our website. We're doing some exciting things on our website. And we are going to continue to do some exciting things uh, on the website. I look forward to talking to you the next time. This is Mary Gregory signing off. Have a great day.